TSN hockey analyst, former captain for a player in the NHL. It's uh, Dave Poulin. What's happening, Dave? Gentlemen, I'm smiling. I just caught the tail end of your little chat about relationship between a player and a general manager. And in Philadelphia, my teammate and close friend, Bob Clark, became general manager. Then we had kind of a complex relationship because I was the captain, he was the GM, and Mike Keenan was the head coach. So there were many times when the captain was the buffer between the head coach and the GM. But to show you about the business, uh, when my phone rang one afternoon in Pittsburgh on a road trip, my roommate Rick Tocken picked up the phone and handed it to me. It was Clarky, and he just said, uh, Davey, I just traded you to Boston. <laughs> just like that <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> so it wasn't like hey you're a great friend and we've been together a long time and we've done some great things together and we went to the finals and no it was like uh Davey, I, I just traded to boston oh thanks it's, bob thanks for yeah i know it's, business, it, eh? it's just it, it's a business it's i a business. think it's you Don't know i'm in the media and, and exactly i'm in the media and you guys are in the media now too and dave you as well with tsn like you lose sight of that sometimes like even watching the the b-roll if you will of of shanahan and dubas uh, dubas excuse me going back and forth like you know i know they were buddies but like sometimes you got to make tough decisions uh but ultimately what was your read on what's transpired the last week and a half here well go back to last monday and i think kyle dubas caught everybody by surprise on monday uh, including his own camp and that's pretty unusual. Usually you'd have a good sense of what the narrative was going to be, what the messaging was going to be. And, and once again, guys, we know what we hear secondhand. You know, we're not privy to the conversations inside. But the candor and emotion of Kyle Dubas that day was very real. It was also like the candor of emotion of a lot of people right when the season ends. You know, and like when the season ends you're so beat up and there's so much emotion and it's so it's so it's physical it's mental it's you're not sleeping you're you've got a million thoughts racing through your head and and i think that's why brendan shanahan didn't want kyle dubas to talk to the press that day let's let things calm down like so when a game ends there's a cooling off period before we would let randy carlisle or ron wilson go up to the microphone for a reason <laughs> for a reason like Randy you're not going out there right now <laughs> like just wait and so I think that was the first part of it and then the week transpired as it did but we only got the week through the eyes of Brendan Shanahan which was the messaging on Friday and the message on Friday afternoon caught everyone by surprise without a doubt that they were in fact moving on from Kyle Davis so I think at some point we'll find out what went on back and forth in that week from both sides of the equation. Now, Kyle did send a note out yesterday. Uh, uh, he sent a release from his family. But the points that he made that day, guys, that it was family related. And we have to appreciate that. We have to understand that. Um, in today's world, we simply do. And, and if those were all the reasons that he was saying, I'm either, the hard part is he said, I'm either going to be the general manager of the Leafs, or I'm going to be out. I'm going to take some time. I'm not going to surface somewhere else. And I don't see even the circumstances changing how or why the final decision was made in Toronto. I don't see how that changes how he shows up right after in Pittsburgh, if in fact he does. Yeah, and pools obviously something went wrong as far as, you know, they were close, but they were also fragile enough to have it fall apart that fast. Take us through, I mean, not very many people know what happens in an NHL locker room, but I think even fewer knows what happens in those offices and closed doors when NHL brass and the executives are all talking. Your experience being in multiple different organizations, is it that often that there is a power struggle? Is there... Um, you know, uh, um, jargoning for ideas and to move forward with this direction. Does that happen more often than people think? Yes, and it's healthy. And you want people with different opinions in the room. If I'm sitting in the room with five people, the last thing I want is five people that agree with everything I say. And that's why they're there is because they're different opinions. And I think you'd be shocked if you knew some of the things that were discussed in a room about key players, and, but, it, but it stays in the room. And, yeah. and so it also changes, I would think, Rosie, from the time when Kyle Dubas took over in Toronto. Well, he was, when he first came in, he was what, 28 years old? Yeah. Well, 
had no NHL experience at all. So you're going to change over time and your relationship with your boss is going to change and the input's going to change and that should all be expected. And even in terms of latitude, it's going to it change. It's going to evolve. But I think people would be stunned if they knew some of the topics that were talked about in the privacy of a management room. I mean, it's almost in the privacy of your home. And you say things sometimes and you're like, oh, I can't use my loud voice on that one. <laughs> I can't say that anywhere outside the house. It's the exact same yeah. way in an office. And even in terms of, of trading star players and things, names come up, like even between general managers, it, there's a reason trades happen between certain teams because there's a trust level between general managers. But it's not unusual to call and say, Hey, I know you love your guy there, but if you're ever thinking of trading him, look, make sure I'm on the list. I'm, you know, and the guy he's talking about, I have no intention of trading. I have no, and, and, but it plants a seed in your mind, right? And so, yeah, those conversations, Rosie, happen way more than players would be comfortable with and that people would be comfortable with. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I think people are naive if they don't know that's happening behind the scenes. Like, it has to be. Uh, it really is crazy. And it's intriguing as well, sort of the GM search here, Dave. Is there a definitive name that sticks out for you right off the bat? Really, the only one we've heard, uh, Brad Trilliving. But the process, guys, in a different chapter in my life, uh, I was in the executive search business, not sports-related. And so if a search goes on, the first thing you do is you build a job description for the search. And you work in you know, the search firm would work with the principal and the company and say, okay, here's what we want from the job. These are certain, he has to have this, 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 and this. Um, this, these three things I'd like, but I don't have to have. Beautiful technology. Yeah, I guess uh, we'll, we'll try to get Dave back in the mix here. I know he's got a couple minutes remaining. I was really curious to hear that answer too, damn it. It always seems to be that but way, right? But uh yeah it is curious like that's what it becomes you become a headhunter right like here's you got to put together all the pieces of your organization all the people that are there are going to stay there and who works well with what and what is our mantra and our mission statement and is that changing down the road and if we make this change to this guy is he going to fit with all these people and you just become a headhunter and that's before you even get thinking about talking about hockey or players or on ice performance right there's just so much that goes into it and you know everyone's sitting here going Who's the GM going to be? It's like, fuck, that is a massive decision that could last a decade. So I understand the, you know, the, I mean, I know it's, uh, they're under a gun to get some stuff going and they need to get the wheels going, but this is a huge decision that uh, I don't think anyone should be or is taking lightly over there. Well, that's a fascinating thing to me is like Brendan Shanahan said, they don't want to rush this decision making, but like uh, they sort of do. Uh, and I know we have Dave back. Dave, I just want your answer on that quickly. I know you got to fly, but just your thoughts on, on Brad Chill Living and that whole process, please. Well, the time frame, I mean, bringing eyes in from another organization, how did he perceive the leaves? How does he perceive the core four? Does he think they have to be broken up? Like that would be a fresh look and fresh ideas. And, and Brendan Shanahan came in, you know, and, it, once again, this is all reported that he did call the core four and say intentions were to keep it together. Well, what if a new guy says, I think they'd be way better with some sort of split up here. And the problem here, guys, July 1st is looming. And once you give Austin Matthews is no move, Mitch Marner is no move, and Willie Nylander is no trade, you've lost some form of control here. So that's the issue is July 1st is a real date. It's a hard date. And it, it loses a lot of control for the organization. 